Good morning. I thought I would uh, update some of the predictions from the rate of spread of COVID-19 in Canada. I actually had done some of this yesterday, but I updated my numbers that uh, are recent as of March 20th. So today is early morning, March 21st. A couple of things in the news recently. Um, Justin Trudeau said the Canada U.S. border will close to non-essential travel on a Friday night, so that would have just have closed uh, recently. Um, Harry sends heartfelt message from Canada over difficult decision to cancel the Invictus Games. Um, probably the right thing to do. And um, could Canada enforce coronavirus as self-isolation? Legal experts say yes. Yeah. So right now, most of uh, what we're doing in the U.S. and Canada is voluntary. Uh, but it's um, some, something that could be uh, become uh, more strictly enforced. So these are graphs looking at um, spread in Canada, and, and there's some interesting things going on in, in the 20 days in March and the best fit line. It, it's hard to tell on this line here, but this is the residuals from the from the best fit line, and this smiley face uh, is the hallmark of um, accelerating growth. So this is still in the log. Um, 10 metrics, so it's it's more than exponential growth. It's accelerating exponential growth. If we fit the model for the first 10 days of March, we, we get a slope that's much more shallow than if we fit the model for the next 10 days in March. And in fact, the, the doubling rate that we observed um, in the early part of March was 15% per day growth, so about five days doubling time. We're seeing much closer to 30% growth rate right now, which is something close to just a little less than three days doubling time. So that's quite substantial. So if we take that information and we, we fit a line to the recent growth because we think that's most uh, relevant. We would predict that at the end of March in, in 11, 10 days that we would have uh, something like 19,000 cases. Um, we have 1,085 as of when I looked on the web before starting this. Now, so far in these videos, I haven't really talked about predictability, but these regression lines always have uh, error bars around them or confidence intervals around them. And um, I wanted to point out that I've fallen off this, my slide as well. Okay, so if we take the straight regression line, we would uh, say that I think it's gonna be 19,000 cases, but the uncertainty from the regressions suggests it could be somewhere between 13 and 27,000. That seems like a wide error bar, and, and it is because it's, um, compounding. So if you're off by a little bit, that compounds day over day and your errors get your errors get bigger and your predictions get worse. But I wanted to point out that let me put this over here, see if that works. And not really, oh well. Um, the prediction is strongly influenced by the recent rise in numbers in some of the provinces just now starting to so, show uh, spread. So uh, Manitoba, Newfoundland, um, no that's New Brunswick. I'm sorry, it's not Newfoundland, my my bad typo. Nova Scotia and Saskatchewan grew from eight cases to 58 cases in four days. That's a 65% per day growth rate. That's a, an astonishing, you know, uh, rate. So it's possible that that's just because um, cases were discovered and testing started to ramp up, and maybe the spread isn't quite that fast. It's just that we're discovering that those cases were there. If we use the more conservative growth rates from Ontario and BC, where the epidemic has been established longer, we would say instead of 19,000 cases, um, we would predict something closer to 14 to 15,000 on the 31st. And then the error bar would shift down some. So I'm not sure we're going to get to 19,000 cases. It can go either way. If this acceleration we're seeing in some of the other provinces is real, then we're going to have a lot of cases. If the acceleration we're seeing is an artifact of discovery of our first clusters and in testing, it's possible that there'll only be 14,000 cases in, in Canada in 10 or so days. I wanted to also show the predictions based on the four most um, heavily impacted provinces so far. And um, so yeah, on the 31st of March in 10 days, I think Ontario will see about 3,500 cases, British Columbia about 3,300, Quebec about 2,400, and Alberta around 2,000. So those are the four provinces that have had the largest um, outbreaks that have been growing more steadily a little bit longer. And uh, the other provinces may or may not catch that, you know, whether that acceleration we're seeing is, is real or is an artifact. Um, now, the, the way exponential growth works, of course, um, 
15,000 cases in, in 10 days could become 100,000 cases a week later if we don't stop that sort of uh, incredible rate of spread. Um, even at 25 or 28 percent growth, we're, which is what we're seeing in, in um, Ontario and, and British Columbia and so forth, doubling time is, is under four days. So things can still continue to, to grow quite dramatically. The hope is that since Ontario um, and parts of Canada have started to have canceled university classes, shut down schools, uh, imposed social distancing um, routines, um, while these numbers are still low relative to, for example, the States or Europe, that we will um, see slowing in these growth rates, you know, 7, 10, 14 days after we uh, implemented those procedures. So maybe by the time we get to 15 or 20,000 cases in Canada, the growth rate will really start to slow down and we won't get to 100,000 cases like we will in the States or a million cases, which is still conceivable in the States. So um, that uh, the good news is that uh, starting earlier in the epidemic process in Canada, I have more hope that we'll actually slow the epidemic down before it becomes uh, the tsunami that they referred to in in Italy that just overwhelmed uh, their medical system and would overwhelm any medical system. Thank you for listening.